Hello and welcome to this video. So we'll pick up right where we left off. So we have our cumulative data in the Excel sheet and now comes the tricky part and that's actually getting a chart in there. I'm going to delete off all of this comment stuff so it's all just a little bit smaller. So we're going to write a couple of functions in here. The first one we're going to call def get line chart. That'll take in a book, a start row, an end row, a labels column, a data column, a title and a sheet name. So the whole process of adding a chart into Excel is actually very similar to what you do manually when you add one inside an Excel sheet and you'll recognize if you're used to doing that some of the syntax. So the first thing we'll do is use our Excel workbook to add a chart and it's going to be of type line. Now what we need to do is much like in Excel we need to add our series. So we're going to type chart.addSeries and then an object. And this object is going to have three keys and values. The first one is categories and that'll be a list of values that are the sheet name, the start row, the labels column, the end row, and the labels column. Now, if you're familiar to using Excel, what I've just done here, we're fairly clear. We're taking a sheet and then we're just taking which row we start on and which column and which we end on and which column to get the actual categories for our chart, so the x-axis. The next one is very similar, it's the values. So that will have sheet name, start row, the data column, the end row, and the data column. And finally, we're going to set line and an object color blue. So we've added a series to our chart. So we've added the data and set the color. Now we'll set the title. So we'll say chart.setTitle and then we have an object and we've got the name and the title. And then we're going to turn off the legend because we've just got one line. So we're going to set the legend that none is true. And last but not least, we can return the chart. So now we have our getLineChart function. We can write a function which takes in our pair, our data frame and the particular cross and then we can write this data to a particular workbook. So we'll call this function add chart, and that takes in the pair name, the cross, the data frame, and our XLS writer. We need to get a workbook. So we'll type workbook is equal to writer.book. We need to get our particular worksheet. So we'll ask our writer for its sheets and the one with our pair name. And now we'll get our chart. So we'll say that our chart is equal to get line chart, and then we'll send in our workbook. The start row is one, remember they're zero indexed. The end row is simply the number of entries we have inside our data frame. Remember it's zero index, so this works out quite conveniently. And the labels are column eight and the date is column nine. Remember in our Excel sheet, column seven was H, that has the indexing. So we've got the times here, which are column eight and then column nine is then J. The title can then be the cumulative gains for our pair name and the particular cross. And then last but not least, the pair name itself will send into the function. So now we've got our chart, what we can do is we can insert it and we'll insert it at K1. And that's all we need to do to have our chart added to the Excel sheet. So down in add pair charts, we need to actually call this function, otherwise nothing's going to happen. So we'll say the add chart, and then we want to send in our row.pair, because that's the pair name, our row.cross, temp all trades, that's the data frame, and then the writer. So I'll run that script, cross my fingers, it seems to have run. Let's see what we have then. Okay, so we have a chart on the Excel sheet. That's something, and that's pretty good. It is a little bit small, so let's uh, close the sheet and see if we can't uh, scale that up a little bit. So inside uh, Add Chart here, just before we insert the chart, we can set the X scale, and we'll set it to two and a half and two and a half. So go back into the console, just rerun this, try again. Okay, and we can see that we've now got a much bigger, more visual chart on the screen of the cumulative gains for each of the pairs and each of their best cross that we found inside the analysis. Here's a really nice, interesting one. Okay, so now that's working. The last thing that remains is actually to integrate this into ma underscore sim.py. A couple of videos ago, we added into process results this create Excel here with a final DF. Well, now the create Excel is actually taking in this all trades as well. So we need to refactor this slightly. So what we're going to do actually is we're going to return the final data frame from here. And we're going to return the all trade data frame from here. And I'm going to cut this create Excel from here. Now down at the bottom of run, we'll say that the final DF is equal to what was returned by process results. And all trades DF is equal to store res trades results. And now we can create our Excel with the final DF and the all trades DF. So I'm going to go into the console then and run masim.py and leave that running and then cut the video and come back when uh, the simulation's finished. That seems to have run and finished. We uh, have our familiar number down here. 
So checking the Excel sheet then, and you can see that things seem to have run and worked okay. So that's it then for this video. We've already come quite a long way, and you deserve to pat yourself on the back if you've uh, stuck with it, and especially if you were beginning and hadn't seen any of this before, because it really is information overload. What we're going to do now is we're going to collect more data. So we're going to write a script that can collect us a lot of historical data and also at different granularities. And once we've done that, we can move on to testing more complicated strategies, maybe where we have take profits and stop losses, and we step through the price data in a much finer granularity than just doing start and end like we did with the moving averages. So thanks very, very much for watching. Your comments are always welcome on YouTube or via email. I've had quite a few emails, especially last week. And see you in the next one.